to work is and around 600,000. Uh, over 60,000. Yes. Uh, 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 the the Philadelphia. community of West Philadelphia. That I had to tell about my community. Mm -hmm. and my people are saying, hey. I'm here, I'm alive, I exist. I live up there. I live, I live up there. I live up the street. I live like that. I live up there. Black Catholics have been in Philadelphia since the American Revolution. As the numbers of Black Catholics grew, uh, the the uh, resentment of the people in the churches also grew that they wanted the Black people to sit in the back and receive communion last. And the Black Catholics got tired of doing that, so they gathered together and they started uh, their determination to get their own church. Churches at that time was um, churches of your race. Irish churches, Italian churches, um, Polish churches, and Polish didn't go to Italians. Italian, they were like, uh, you know, churches that was for just their own nationality. By the 1880s, the 12th and Lombard neighborhood of the 4th Presbyterian Church had become mostly black. The congregation put the church up for sale. Black Catholics focused on buying it. The heiress, Catherine Drexel, saw their determination and she became their mentor. When the black Catholics got the money to buy the church, Catherine, as their mentor, went to the archdiocese. John Patrick Ryan, the archbishop at that time, told her, we're not sending white priests to minister to a black congregation. So Catherine Drexel talked to the Holy Ghost Fathers. The Holy Ghost Fathers okay. they came to Philadelphia. The St. Peter Clavis, mm -hmm. because no other priest would go there to be the pastor. But they wanted their name on the deed. So Catherine Drexel went back to the archdiocese and she told the archbishop, we have the priest, we have the building, and we want to get the church dedicated. And Patrick John Ryan, the Archbishop of Philadelphia, said, I'll dedicate the church, but I want my name on the deed, too. As a precaution, the deed contained this protective language that reads, And the said thereabove described premises are to be used as a church for colored people, parsonage, and school attached thereto. White people, however, being permitted to attend all religious services to receive the sacraments. St. Peter Claver Church was dedicated on January 3rd, 1892. St. Peter Claver was a full service church. For instance, all of your needs could be met there. In his book, The Philadelphia Negro, that W.B. Du Bois referred to St. Peter Claver and how industrious the people were. We had schools, the Oblate Sisters too, was there before the Blessed Sacraments. They administered to the black children where, for education, where Pennsylvania schools did not allow blacks to register in them until 1892. In the 1950s and 60s, the neighborhood around the parish began to change due to gentrification. My job was to organize uh, the community groups that were in what was known as the South Central uh, Urban Re Renewal Area. Uh, and again, the boundaries are roughly uh, from Lombard Street, Washington Avenue, uh, river, river, river to river. The underlying factor in the South Central community was the Crosstown Expressway. The Crosstown Expressway was, was originally part of the 50-year um, plan that the city of Philadelphia had. 
the the blacks were fighting the Crosstown Expressway because urban renewal was black removal. What had been a mostly poor black neighborhood had become a mostly white, pricey neighborhood. I think it was more about they didn't want the black children running around the neighborhood. A lot of them complained. Uh, you know, and I guess in a couple of the priests, you know, they talked to the neighbors and they didn't talk to the parents and stuff. And I think if we had all worked something out together, I really think the school would, would, and the church would be open today. We had a father, I think his name was Father Andrew. He had us going around uh, taking like a consensus of the neighborhood. Cause he was trying to, get, uh, he was trying, I guess, to see that if you can get something going, order the people to come. Because he had the ear of somebody in the archdiocese. Yeah. All I know, we went to church, and we all sitting here in church, and they said that this is y'all last Sunday. Mm -hmm. It was, it hurt at all of us. This new word that we heard, suppress. The suppression meant nobody could be baptized, nobody could be uh, married, and nobody could be buried. What, the, what it does, it strangles a church. If you won't die a natural death, we'll strangle the life out of you. So that was the archdiocese method of strangling the life out of St. Peter Claver. Investigation was done by the National Catholic Reporter, and secrets were revealed. Cardinal Kroll ignored his commission's recommendations. That Father McAndrews had no experience in black ministry before his first pastorate at St. Peter Claver's, and that McAndrews suggested to the archdiocese that St. Peter Claver be closed because he did not believe in what he called ethnic parishes. Yeah, I really felt sorry for most of the older women mm -hmm. because if they had nowhere else to go or nothing to do, they had the church. They, they took it from them, but they also took something that was a beautiful thing and minimized what it was really about. In my opinion, for financial reasons, you just take it away because it would be lucrative for somebody else to have it. So instead of supporting it, you drain it. Parishioners continued to worship until the Holy Ghost Fathers quietly abandoned the parish and the archdiocese took control. Now that the property was worth lots of money, the archdiocese wanted to sell it and entered a request to the Philadelphia Orphans Court for the removal of certain words. A group of black Catholics met to discuss options to preserve the legacy of St. Peter Claver Church. How dedicated we were to our faith and to our religion, and how strong that we were in getting our own building and making it our church of worship. And we had to sacrifice with no loans, no credit cards. It was 10 cent, 20 cent, 15 cent. And we should know the history on who helped us. But the most important thing for blacks to know is the blacks and the people of color that were so dedicated, they wanted a place to worship their God and their faith. And they didn't need the archdiocese. They did it independent. And we can do that today with that same drive. And we trusted each other. And we became brothers and sisters when it counted. <laughs>